there's a story about a very faithful man who, you know, prayed regularly, um, worshipped, really believed and trusted in God. And a storm came and ravaged his town, began to flood the streets. And he knew that he would be saved by God. So as the, the streets flooded and the water came up to the door, the neighbors came by in a boat and said, you know, come with us, like get in, we'll take you to higher ground. And he said, no, God will save me. And then the floodwaters kept rising. He had to go up to the second floor of his house. At that point, the National Guard came with a rescue boat and tried to get him into the boat and said, you know, come on, come with us, we'll save you. And he's out his second floor window said, no, God will save me. Okay, so the floodwaters kept rising. He had to climb onto the roof of his house. At that point, a helicopter, a rescue helicopter came and he, he waved them off. He wouldn't get in the, into the basket and be, and be rescued. He said, God will save me. He had complete faith. So he drowned and when he got to heaven, he was confused and he, he asked God, why didn't you save me? I, I believed in you, I had faith in you. And God said, I sent two boats and a helicopter. What more did you want? <laughs> and I love that because I feel, I see that happening right now. It's just, I keep being reminded of that because it doesn't matter. And it's not just like a Christian thing, right? It's, it's spiritual people. It's like, it's like this belief that your belief has to save you um, devoid of anything else, right? Not, not through the world. Um, how, how, sometimes how God's going to save you is through someone, through something, through this world, right? That the rejection of all things physical, all things created by us um, is not a spiritual necessity. I think it's just being confused that you you have to reject the world to prove your faith, um, but that's not how it works. God works through us. God, we are God's legs. God doesn't have legs on this earth except for ours, right? So we're we we are that. We are we can bring that, and we're supposed to be bringing it to each other, and in a in a, um, you know, uh, a desperate situation in a, in uh, something like what's happening right now in the world, like we have this opportunity to, um, to save each other. We have the opportunity to be the lifeboats for each other. So cool, let's do it. You know, we, we, it's all, everything's an opportunity. Everything is an opportunity for learning and everything is an opportunity for love. I, I don't think we need to deny this world to be connected to the spiritual world. There is, there are two planes, right? There are, um, Eckhart Tolle describes it like, like the cross, right? Like the father-son connection. So, right, so us being a ray of the sun, us being the child of the father, right? So there's our, there's the spiritual dimension, but then there's this dimension. There's the Holy Spirit that runs through all of this. There is this physical world that we're living in right now. The earth school, right? Gary Zukav would call it the earth school. I love the earth school. I want to show you, I almost wore this t-shirt. I didn't want to wear it because it was dirty, but um, <laughs> I have this t-shirt. I'm going to show you. It's, it's uh, here, can you see that? Property of earth school. Right, I love this t-shirt and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you something, I don't know if you could see this. It's like all ripped, right? So there's like rips around the neck and there's like holes in it over here, right? It's, it's, they're just rips everywhere. This is how it came. I didn't, it's not that I've worn it to death, right? It's like a deconstructed t-shirt <laughs> and I was wearing it um, at dog training this week with her. And the trainer was like, do you have a bird? <laughs> she thought like my bird had like packed holes in my shirt or something, which I thought was really funny. 
but I love that it's got holes. I love that it's like beat to death because you know what? The earth school is going to put you through it, right? This earth school is going to put us through a lot of trials and tribulations, and you're going to come out a little bit <laughs> battered <laughs> and worn. Um, that's part of it. So our spirituality, our, I think sometimes our spirituality, our religion, um, like we latch onto it, like it's something that's going to bring us um, above it all. So we can just like float through life and um, nothing bad will happen if I believe. That's, that's not the point of the earth school. The earth school is going to beat you up <laughs> like my t-shirt to, um, to shine you, you know, like the, like the stones rolling around in the river, like river, you know, river rocks get that nice smooth finish and shiny, right? Because we're, we're rubbing up against each other and, and everything that's, that the world is presenting, that your life is presenting. I wanted to talk about, you know, faith healing, miraculous healing. There, that is a thing, right? So Ab like Abraham, who I was talking about, Abraham Hicks, um, Abraham said through Esther once that we could regrow limbs if someone would do it first. We could, we could regrow limbs, right? If someone could do it, so then we could believe it, we, we could do that. That's great. That's definitely true. Um, I'm not there yet. So if I cut off a limb accidentally, I hope that someone will help me, <laughs> right? If I, if I could, and if I could, if I was there and I could re be the first one to regrow the limbs, um, I would still help someone else if they couldn't, right? If, if, that, if someone, if, just because that's a possibility doesn't mean we're all there. Um, so, even if you do get there, even if you're like Jesus, even if you can heal others and, and instantly heal yourself, if everyone else isn't there, go help them. That's what Jesus did, right? Help the, the others. Um, so, so don't forget about everyone else, even if, if you can get yourself to that level. Um, it doesn't mean we're all there and we are supposed to reach down and, and help, I think. Um, I, when I was a teenager, a young teenager, I want to say I was like 13 or something. So my parents both <laughs> smoked cigarettes like crazy when I was a kid, like literally constant, like chain smoking. So my dad was at one point smoking three packs a day. So if you're smoking three packs a day, you have to constant, right? You have to be smoking like constantly. My mom was smoking about two packs a day. So my brothers and I never smoked, never will. We were so like disgusted by it because that means everywhere we went in the car, right? There's smoke, it was terrible. So, you know, it was the seventies. Um, but so I was a teenager and went to this healing um, service. So like I said, we grew up Catholic, went to church every Sunday. And then, so my dad, I remember my mom and dad both being there. I don't remember if my brothers were there, but I know I went for some reason. And it was outdoors. I remember being outside, you know, but it was set up like church and there was some kind of a service. And then there was this faith healer person. So this wasn't our regular pastor. Um, and he was going around and like touching people, like putting his hands like this on their head and he would say something and then they would like pass out, you know, laying out in the spirit, right? So they'd pass out and people behind them would hold them or sit them down or whatever. So we're all standing up and, um, and I don't know if my dad had, had purposefully gone there with the intention of like healing his addiction to cigarettes, but um, the, the pastor came over and, and put his hands on my dad and said something and my dad like, pa like passed out and sat down. And, and then he's like coming over and I see him looking at me and I'm like, okay, I'm 13 or whatever, right? I'm like, I mean, I don't know if I was literally doing this, but <laughs> that's how I felt like, don't you come, <laughs> don't you come over here. Meanwhile, now I'd be like, <laughs> you know, give it to me. But um, I was like, don't even look at me, you know? And he said something like, like someone is feeling um, misunderstood or, you know, in despair or something. And I was like, like in that teenage angst of like, no one understands me and, you know, 
my family d- doesn't understand me and I'm all alone in the world, whatever, right? Just in puberty, so in adolescence. So, but he said something like that and he came over to me and he put his hands over here on my head, towards my head. And I felt like this rush of heat, like lightning coming down through my body. And I could see how you would, you know, if you were to surrender to it, you would lay, you would lay down or you would need to sit down. Like it was like rush of heat. Um, But I was like, like, I'm not, (laughs) I'm not going to fold under this, uh, this for some reason right so just my stubbornness in that moment I resisted it although it did I did feel it like rush through me um my father never smoked cigarettes after that by the way I remember him coming home and like he looked up something in the bible I don't know if the guy if the pastor had told him about a certain passage or if a passage certain passages came to his head but I remember reading something that was really meaningful to him and anyway thankfully he didn't smoke after that and then my mom had to quit and she she's pretty stubborn she just quit cold turkey after that too so um so there's two two cool things about that right the one cool thing is that that's possible you know and yeah if we can get there great like let's let's get there let's all get there let's all be that where we can be that for each other but also um you have to be open to it you have to be willing right? I was not at that moment. <laughs> I did, I resisted it. Um, but, and we, we resist healing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute too, about, you know, what you can do to be in a more willing state to be healed, how we can not resist healing as well as, right? There's two things, right? We don't have to resist the reality and we don't have to resist miracles either. Um, Henry Grayson, my teacher for a long time, he wrote, um, well, he wrote Mindful Loving. That was his first book about relationships. But Henry also wrote, um, use your, I always forget the name of this. I think it's use the body to heal the mind. Because the mind, Henry always says the mind trumps all, right? Use the body to heal the mind. So we use these body techniques like EFT, like tapping and all these things I learned from Henry um, where we use the physical, but you're ultimately trying to heal the mind because when the mind is healed, that's when you're a miraculous healer, right? That's when things can come through you. So, um, and Henry has had a couple of instances in his life where he had did have instant healing. He's, he's not there all the time either, but um, he, I remember him telling me about one time he was using like a drill, like an electric drill, and then needed to change the bit and without thinking, he grabbed the bit with his fingers to, to take it out and it was red hot. So it was so hot that his finger stuck to it, just like instantly burned and stuck onto the, <laughs> the bit. And he let go and it had a moment of like, it's healed, had a moment of complete like belief, trust, surrender, clarity, whatever you want to call that. And didn't even, didn't look at it, didn't tend to it, whatever, I looked at it later, there was nothing there not a mark, not a, just, just healed, done. Um, so, so those things are possible. I, I again, I understand that, right? Those things are, are part of it. And this, and this plane is also part of it. Um, I also want to tell you one more, one more healing story. When I was in graduate school, um, I was stressed the F out. There are children here, I won't say. Um, (laughs) but I was like working really hard. I had a full-time internship. I was full-time in grad school. Um, I was just constantly, you know, day and night, like running around. I was also training, um, as a aerobics instructor too, because I thought that'd be a good idea to do that at the same time. And, um, I, I got really sick, actually got pneumonia once. That was interesting. But then also, I woke up one morning and I, my elbows were swollen. My knees were swollen. I couldn't bend my elbows. I couldn't bend my knees. So imagine trying to get out of bed when you can't (laughs) bend at your joints. So my, my roommates helped me go to the medical center. I went to George Washington university. So I go to this amazing, right. GW medical center, like amazing research hospital and everything. And they start looking for, um, the bullseye. They're thinking probably I have Lyme disease. 
So they start looking on my body for like a bite and a bullseye and all of a sudden I didn't have that. Um, they tested me for all STDs. They tested me for like all these things. <laughs> I don't have any of this. Um, and they're like, well, here's anti-inflammatories and you know, stop teaching yoga or stop teaching aerobics, whatever. I wasn't teaching yoga yet. And um, this, then that's it. And they referred me to a rheumatoid specialist. Like basically you have arthritis. Um, and I was like, this doesn't sound logical. I'm like 27 years old and uh, I'm not gonna just accept that. I'm not just going to say, okay, stop doing activity and just take these, this medicine and, and that's it. So my sister-in-law at the time was um, like, from what I knew, she was the sort of the healer, like this alternative healer type of person. And like when her, when the kids were sick, when my nephews were sick, she would put uh, garlic in their socks at night and, you know, do all this weird stuff. So I was like, she might know <laughs> what to do. So I went to, I went to their house and I stayed there for the weekend. And um, she basically just gave me juice. She basically just put me on a juice fast, right? So I just did like green juices and carrot juice. And she's like, if you're really hungry, you can have a banana. I'm like, oh, can I? Thanks. That, that would be great if I could have a banana. <laughs> so, so I did, did this juice fast and really I was eating garbage. I mean, I was in, like I said, I was doing all those things. I was just eating like on the run. I was eating things that were fast and processed and not good. Not that you, things have to be processed to be fast. Like now I realize that. But anyway, I was eating like so much processed stuff and just really probably had that all built up in my, in my body and all this inflammation. So when you do that, when I did that juice fast, that first night I woke up from the pain, like it made, it brought it to an acute situation and then healed it. And then I ate like just really clean, just whole food, unprocessed food, just, you know, no dairy, no meat, no, you know, just really vegetables, brown rice. Um, for a long time, I felt amazing. So I'm saying that to say that sometimes the healing is on the physical plane, right? Like that was necessary. And I went to the doctor to see like what, okay, this was their, their level of understanding. This is what they had for me. They had what they had for me. Okay. It's not to say there's anything wrong with that. I just was like, there, maybe there's something they don't know. And, you know, Western medicine isn't really integrated yet with nutrition very much. So there's that. Um, so if something happened to me now, if I got some disease or something, you know, I, I wouldn't just, yeah, if I could find one of those faith healer guys, I would probably go, but also I would just start eating greens, you know? Um, so, so you can work on things at, at all levels. Like, why not? Like there, this is real too, right? So, so what is the latest research? What is the data? What, what shows that it's helpful right now? If that's medicine, if that's, um, food, if that's, you know, if, if you want to go to a Reiki healer, if you want to, whatever, and also believe in whatever it is that you decide to do, right? So healing is bolstered by our, by our belief, right? So my dad at the faith healer guy was, uh, believed and was healed. And I did not want to believe and, you know, and I could still feel it, but I, I like resisted, right? So you can work with it right? You can, you can by believing. Henry always says if he's take, he takes supplements or vitamins and stuff, and he always thinks this, this is healing for my body. This is healing for my body. So if you do have to take medicine, what, what if you have to go on an antibiotic or, or chemotherapy or whatever, if you just make any of those decisions, yeah, take it and say, this is healing my body. This is healing my body. Like add your own. It's, it's all, we don't have to separate, right? Separation is the problem. Right, so you don't have to separate this this world from your spiritual world, or your spirit from your mind, from your body. You can you can use use all of it. Um, so as far as physical blocks or mental blocks are whatever our blocks to healing. Um, Henry has traveled around and you know offered these lectures and teachings on healing, the, using the body to heal the mind, like using emotional freedom technique and all these techniques that 
stimulate the energy system in the body. Um, and so this is sort of an unscientific study, but he's kind of um, surveyed everyone as he's, as he's met all these people and found that by muscle testing. So when you hold your arm out and push down on, someone pushes down on your arm and Henry uses the muscle testing and I do also in a way that like you make a statement. And when you are saying something that is true at the core of your being, your arm will be very strong. So like you can try this with a friend and have you just say my name is and say your, your real name and have them push on your arm and then lie, say my name is, make up a name. And you'll, you'll find that you, you can't really hold your arm up. Yeah, you guys can do it together. <laughs> it's really, it's neat because then you can see like what's true. And so with muscle testing, he's like kind of gathered that about 80% of people are holding the belief that they don't deserve to be well or to be healed and that, they, that it's not safe to be well or to be healed. So 80% of people holding like both of those, I think, and then another like 10% are maybe holding one or the other. So that's like most people are holding at least one of those thoughts. <laughs> and those are what uh, Henry would call the core, the core energy belief, the core um, message that you want to heal first. If you say you want to heal something, you want to be free of something, right? You have to make sure that you think you deserve it and that you think it's safe. So here's me when the faith healer's putting his hands over my head, me going like, I don't know, either, either I don't deserve it, I'm not worthy of this, or um, this isn't safe, like who, who is this guy, right? So my resistance to that, that's my stubbornness, that's my ego, is going to block healing. Whether healing is going to miraculously um, appear or whether someone is offering it to you. So, we want to be in a state of we think we deserve, we, we know that we're worthy just because we exist. And that it's safe, that it's safe to be well, that it's safe to be healed. Um, Henry, like I said, has had moments of the instant healing, but he also had uh, a hernia that he tried to heal with his you know, mind and without surgery for like three years before it resolved. And what one of the things he always asks is like, why do I need this? So that like, why are you holding something? Like, why wouldn't it be safe to be free of it? So and that it's kind of hard. There's a, um, there's a whole questionnaire about that, that I have of his, that's like, when you're sick, like, what am I getting from this, from keeping this? Maybe you're getting like attention, right? Maybe you're getting care and nurturing. Maybe you're getting to lay on the couch <laughs> which you never let yourself do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting to like, look at like, what are the benefits I'm getting from this? And maybe this is why I need it right now for a while. Like I said, there are those emotional freedom technique you can do and other like mind body techniques that help you release that. Also, that's what yoga does, right? In yoga, we're in the body and myofascial release, like anything that's like opening the body, you're releasing that stuff. Anyone who's been in a yoga pose and burst into tears knows that like you're releasing stuff that you're holding. You don't even have to know what it is, but let it open. When you open the body physically, when you open the fascia in the body, you're opening to healing, right? You're letting go, you're allowing, you're being more and more and more in that state. Let yourself like do those things that are physically healing, like surrender to this, the physical body that you have right now. Just surrender, love it. It loves you from the inside. It's always trying to heal. Every cell in your body is working toward healing all the time. That's how much love like you're filled with. He said, adversity can awaken you or adversity can strengthen your ego. Those are two things that can happen to us. And if you want it to strength, awaken you, to add to your awakening, right? Whatever this, the earth school is presenting, align with the isness of the present moment. He likes to say the isness. Align with the isness of the present moment, not resisting it, right? Resisting the adversity 
is what strengthens the ego. So I Emmanuel's book. Oh, I got Emmanuel's book too. I know I've read to you probably a lot from Emmanuel's book, but I found there were a couple of sequels. Emmanuel was, is a group of spirits channeled by Pat Rodegast. So this is like 1989 or something like that. And she said, or Emmanuel said, your schoolroom is always held within the hands of perfect love. All the monsters to be created on your planet have already been unleashed. So fear will have no new faces. Oh, perhaps a virus or two, nothing more. That's good. No, right. I was like, wow, that's really interesting. So this is in like 1989. She's like, there's nothing else that's gonna happen that you have to be afraid of. Oh, well, a virus or two, nothing more. I just wanted to read you that because I thought that was super interesting. But then they said, because your world is your schoolroom, you walk it with a certain amount of respect that is appropriate. For unless you enter into the illusion, the illusion cannot serve you. That is appropriate for unless you enter into the, the illusion, the illusion cannot serve you. At the same time, you must be aware that you have chosen this walk. Even your bodies are not what they seem. What appears to be solid is in fact, no more solid than the air. It is only molecular, structure spinning exactly as your solar system spins. The vastness of your galaxies is mirrored in the cellular arrangement of your bodies. So you are stardust, right? You are like that. And at the same time, enter the schoolroom. Enter this schoolroom. It, this is, you can do both, right? You can be aware and still enter the schoolroom. They say, all that has transpired in your lives has been designed to bring you to this moment and the next and the next. God manifests in many different forms. You and your humanity have clothed divinity in uniqueness, but you have not altered its nature. Divinity is one. It's all part of it. Right? It's all part of the whole. <laughs>